And the bloom is on the stay. How long to be in Texas Back and riding on the rain How it beckons and I reckon I would work for any way To be free again, just to be again When the bloom is on the stay. Well, it's round the time in Texas And the bloom is on the stay. Head them up into a blind canyon without any trouble. Well, the quicker we get back into town and auction them off, the better I'm going to like it. Say, Gene, I got a new trick. Yeah? What is it? Watch. Now you see it. Hocus Pocus, Gentleman Rocus, Sacramento, California. <laughs> You ain't seen nothing yet. There comes Bill. Say, Bill, did you bring back that magic liquid fire I sent for? You and that liquid fire of yours, I'm sure, got me in a lot of trouble. Why, all them storekeepers at Red Gulf's there think I'm crazy. They claim there ain't no such thing. Oh, they did, did they, huh? Well, my magic book says there is, and it ought to know. Well, have your own way about it. Maybe you can get some of it when you get to Galveston. Here's a cablegram for you, Gene. I reckon it's from your brother in South Africa. South Africa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's from Tex, all right, fellas. Listen to this. Dear Gene, Barclay and I discovered a rich diamond mine in the Valley of Superstition. Stop. Need horses badly, but impossible to buy. Stop. Bring at once as many as you can round up. Stop. We can auction off those not needed at big profit. Cable your plans immediately. Care John Cardigan, Dunbar, South Africa. Diamond, huh? You got a diamond mine. What you... A big one, he said. We're riding, fellas. It's South Africa or bust. Let's, Let's go. go. Don't get lost in them jungles. Bring me back some of those diamonds, Gene. Thanks a lot, Bill, for bringing me these bottles of magic liquid fire from Galveston. It worked pretty good. Hey, who 
that again, pal. Huh? Do that again. Hey. Your brother's waiting in Dunbar for us with the horses when we get back from Kimberly. Don't worry about Gene. By the time we get our claim recorded, he'll be in Dunbar with enough horses to supply the army. Follow Tex Autry. Don't let him get away. I'm going back to Dunbar and report to Cardigan. about a week ago. It's bad news. His brother Gene's coming here with a herd of horses, and he knows about the diamond strike. That means we've got to see that he doesn't get a chance to throw a monkey wrench into our plans when he arrives. Now, gentlemen, you understand the object of this little gang is to find the shell under which the little pea is hidden. And now I'm betting two to one that my end is quicker than your eye. You can't fool me again, Barky. I'm betting the pea is under that shell. Right, that shell. The gentleman selects this shell. I'm sorry, sir, but it's under this one. It better luck next time. Now, gentlemen, two or three of you can play this game just as well as one. It doesn't Now, make... you listen to me, Barky. This is the last time I'm going to tell you to quit running this shell game in front of my saloon. Now, come on, move on, bother someone else for a while. See, now, look here, I work where I please, Cardigan. I'm not... I'll tell you I'm a trouble on the old shell. From a tie-eye, yippee, yippee, yay, yippee, yay. Tie-eye, yippee, yippee, yay. On a $10 horse and a $40 saddle, and I'm going back to punch and take this cattle. From a tie-eye, yippee, yippee, yay, yippee, yay. Tie-eye, yippee, yippee, yay. Old Ben Bolt was a darn good boss, but he'd go see the gals on a sway back horse. Come a tie eye, yippee, yippee, yay, yippee, yay. Tie eye, yippee, yippee, yay. Put in the stirrup and my hand on the horn. I'm the best darn cowboy that. Let's have a talk with this, Audrey. If I'm not mistaken, he'll be looking us up. With my knees in the saddle and my feet in the sky, I'll quit punching cows in the street. By and by, come a tie, I yippee, yippee, yay, yippee, yay. Tie, I yippee, yippee, yay. I'll give you 100 quid for you all, sir. How about picking me out a team at your own price? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You'll all have a chance to buy horses when we auction them off later. Oh, they're yeah. going to have an auction. Oh, all of these off. Say, I should... Are you the stable man? Yeah. Gene Autry's my name. I want you to look after my horses around here until I auction them off tomorrow. Well, they're good. <laughs> I beg pardon, sir, but have you hired an auctioneer yet, sir? 
Why, no, not yet. Well, sir, then I am perhaps the greatest auctioneer in all of South Africa. Yes. Uh, Barky McCusky is the name, sir. And look here, I'll do it for only 5% of the grouse receipts. Well, your terms are all right, McCusky. Yeah. I'll think it over and let you know. Right. Say, by the way, do you know a fellow around here by the name of Tex Autry? He's a brother of mine. Tex Autry? Yes. Uh, 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 why, yes, I've heard of him. Uh, but look, I'm thinking that you'd better talk to Mr. John Cardigan. He used to know Tex quite well. They were great friends, as a matter of fact. Well, thank you very much. Right. We're looking for John Cordy. Is he here? Yeah. I'll get him. Drink round, brave boys, and never give up. Drink round, brave boys, as I have said before. Old Bernie, he has sent to us a fresh reply. And swears that he will come and drink old England dry. T'was calling wood of gallant renown. For his fight, for his king, his country and the crown. For his crown, his king and country, he would fight until he died. Before that they should come and drink old England dry. Everybody sing with me now. Come on, join in the chorus. Dry, 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 boy, dry. He's playing from the drink old England dry, dry, dry. Won't you sing with us? It's all in fun, you know. We'd like to, but we don't know the song. Right, right, oh, and you sing us an American song, then? Right. All right. You probably sing England with me. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, 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 dry. It's where you come and drink all in the dry. A long, long time ago, as all you folks should know, Uncle Noah built himself an ark. For 40 days and nights, the rain was sure a fright, and the animals nearly tore his ark apart. The duck went quack, and the cow went moo, and the rooster's cocky doodle doo, and the old tom catcher raised an awful row. The little pig squealed, and the billy goat bad, and the bullfrog said, Biggest rain we ever had. Uncle Noah's ark's a madhouse now. The horses and cattle and the fowls of the air. Even the long-eared jackass was there. Quack. Yeah. Y'all said who? <laughs> Woof. cock a doo 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 All were there in Uncle Noah's arms. The pleasure's all ours. I understand you want to talk to me. I'm Cardigan. That's right. Should we sit down? Sure. Autry's my name. Not Texas' brother. Yeah. I thought probably you could tell me where he was. Now, I ain't to be the first to tell you this, but the Cape Police are looking for him on a murder charge. Murder? Why, I can't believe it. Well, it's hard for me to believe myself, but facts are facts. The brother and his partner, Barkley, made a very rich diamond strike. They left several weeks ago to record it. Barkley was found murdered on the raft they left on. Since then, Tex has dropped from sight. My Tex wouldn't harm anyone. He must have been framed. Well, I agree with you. You see, I grubstake Tex and Barkley. I'd like to see the whole matter straightened out, if possible. Where did they make their strike? No one has been able to find out. Do you know if you got the cablegram I sent him? No, but I've been holding one for him for several weeks. I'll get it and see if it's the one you sent. Just watch 
This is known as fire water in Texas. That's all. There ain't no more jokes. Well, I found it all right. Thanks. Oh, that's all right. If you ever need any help, just holler. Say, hey, maybe you could help me get some native guys. After the auction tomorrow, I want to start looking for tax. Oh, sure. Well, thanks a lot. I hope I see you again soon. Me too. Kind of like that American, don't you? Jealous? Listen, Gwen. Autry ever takes you from me, I'll kill him. Autry? Yes, Tex Autry's brother. Say, what's that name mean to you? Oh, nothing. Well, Frog, I don't know what Cardigan's game is, but his cablegram's been open and glued back together again. Aren't you the blokes who owns the horses down in the corral? Yeah. Well, you better be looking after them. Someone has left the gate open, and they're getting out. Looks like our friend Cardigan's already started working, Frog. man I left in charge of these horses. We don't know, Bass. You've got a lot of nerve running your horses through my place like that. Who's going to pay for the damage? You know, a herd of stampeding horses is pretty hard to handle, Cordigan. That don't make any difference. Why, it makes a lot of difference. Somebody didn't want us to auction off our horses. So whoever left the gate open should fix up your place. Well, maybe I was a bit too hasty. But one look at my saloon is enough to make anybody mad. Oh, well, that's all right. That's just one of those things. You know, Gene, I think we could have kept them horses out of his saloon at that. No. No? No. Oh. Here, clean up, will you? Hello, Miss Gwen. What happened, Barky? All right, I got the job as auctioneer, all right. Good. Stick close to Autry and learn all you can about him and find out just what he's doing in Dunbar. Right, I'll do that. Look here, gents. This is the last time that you're going to be offered these beautiful horses at any price. 115 pounds. 115 pounds, the gentleman said. 115 quid is my latest. 125. 125 sold. To Mr. John Cardigan for 125 quid. Thanks. There you are, 125 pounds. Put him with the rest of the stock, Namba. Yeah, Bass. Where'd you get that belt buckle? Well, me trade him knife to a native boy for belt, Bob. How long ago? Two, three, four moons. Meet him boy on the river. Like him belt, make him quick trade. You're a good trader. And now, gentlemen, here's another beautiful animal. Now, for this animal, I want the bidding to start at 100 quid and no less. Wait a minute, Barky. I'm sorry, folks, but I've decided to keep the rest of the horses. That's all. Say, Barky, who was this native boy with Cardigan? Oh, him? Well, I think he's one of the Kaffirs that carry supplies. Yeah. His name's Namba. I see. Figure up how much I owe you and see me later this evening. Yes, right, sir. Thank you, sir. Why are you so interested in this Kaffir Namba? Because he's wearing a belt and buckle I gave my brother. He is, huh? Well, if I was a detective, I'd say you had a pretty good clue. Pretty good. It's perfect. We're leaving for the river in the morning, Frog. Get it. 
I'll take care of Autry tonight. What about his partner? I'll take care of him. You uncut diamonds will do the trick. We catch on quick, Johnson. Come out to that help you offered, Cardigan. Well, the offer still holds good. I know where that diamond mine is my brother discovered. Where is it? Hex cabled me that he'd made his diamond strike in the Valley of Superstition. The Valley of Superstition? Is it that bad? Why, the natives claim that no one's ever entered that valley and returned alive. Evidently, Tex and Barclay did. To lead an expedition into that place is practically impossible. Well, I doubt if you can find a native in Dunbar to act as a guide. We'll go without guide. You know this country pretty well. Oh, I can probably find the valley all right, but there's no sense in walking into a buzzsaw. Well, I'm leaving tomorrow. And I intend to get to the bottom of this whole mystery concerning my brother and his partner. You're all right, Autry. I'll go with you. Win, lose, or draw. Then it's a deal. Got plenty of horses to make the trip, so I'll leave it to you to make arrangements for equipment and guides. Righto. And we'll get together the first thing in the morning. Okay. I can get so hearty. Help to me and help to me and help to all our party. He who will not drain his glass shall be freed with cordial flesh. Loop, 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 we live in Poland. Goose with sauces and by God, oh noble days with gusto. Now like storks without knives and forks, they swallow snails and worms, oh. Who to live with frogs is pain, should be sliced with cudgel strain. <laughs> Such we live in Poland. A fine pair you turned out to be. You drink with me and then you pick my pulse. You're crazy now, Buddha. You fellows are mighty amateurish at this business. Now get out. Besides that, you're a poor shot. Sorry, this had to occur in my place, Audrey. But anything's liable to happen during a brawl. Well, that's all right. You miss as good as a mile. Step up the bar, everyone. Drinks are on the house. <laughs> Cardigan. It looks like there's been a new diamond strike. I just saw some of the biggest diamonds that have ever been dug. Where? Who had them? I don't know where they came from, but that American partner, Gene Autry's, had them. What? Are you sure? Sure as I'm a foot high. If you're asking me, I'm betting both of those Americans are illicit diamond buyers. You must be right. Neither one of them two blokes has had time enough to do any digging. Hello, Gene. Hey, look at all the pretty diamonds I got. Look at there. Ain't that a pretty one? Boy, where'd you get these? Well, a fellow by the name of Smith had them, and I swapped a horse for him. Don't you think I made a good deal? That's just the trouble, Frog. You made too good a deal. What do you mean, too good a deal? You reckon they're glass or something? Have you shown these diamonds to anyone? Why, no, I ain't showed them to nobody. I ain't had them only a couple of minutes. You're both under arrest. Huh? Disarm them. You can't do that. We ain't done nothing. Do you mind telling us why we're under arrest? For illicit diamond buying. It's against the law to have uncut diamonds in your possession without a license. Listen, we didn't buy them diamonds. I got them diamonds from a guy by the name of Smith. I gave him a horse for him, and a good one. And I suppose his name was John Smith? It was. And he's a guy about that tall, and he's got a nose like a pumpkin. You know him? No. And nobody else does either. Now listen, Captain. My partner and I have only been in Dunbar two days. Don't you think we're due? I'm sorry, Audrey, but I'll have to lock you up until we move you to Kimberley tomorrow for trial. Take charge of the diamonds, Corporal. All right. All right get out of here. Where are you headed, Cardigan? Get wind of the strike? I don't know or I don't care. I'm on my honeymoon. Well, Dean, it looks like we've been double-crossed all around. Even Barky sold us out. Come on.
Come on, we're starting for Kimberley. John Cardigan's made arrangements there for a lawyer to defend you. That's mighty nice of him. Be lost in the jungle, sure. Let's get back to our native and get on the trail. Gene, do you suppose there's any more lions running loose around here? I wouldn't be surprised. There's probably all sorts of other wild animals, too. Don't you suppose we'd be safer in jail? Well, if you want to go back and give yourself up to the Cape Police, it's all right with me. But I'm going to find the trail to the Valley of Superstition. Well, I'm not backing out, Gene, but gee whiz, I wish I was back in Texas. You and me both. But we've got to find that man that traded you those diamonds. He's the only one who can square us with the police. Oh, how are we going to find him? By finding Cardigan. They're working together, sure. Well, what are you going to do about Gwen? She left Dunbar with Cardigan. I'm worried about her. Uh, you would be. Well, well, well. Fancy meeting you all here. Well, oh, glad to see you and Frog Jean. Although I'll admit it's rather unexpected. Oh, well, that's all right. The pleasure's all ours. Uh, say, look here. How did you get away from the Bloomin' Bobby? Well, if you mean them policemen, that was a cinch. Mr. Cardigan's lawyer fixed that. Oh, now, but hurry up some food. Our guests must be hungry. Thanks, we are hungry. It'd make me very happy if that witch doctor up there in that cave had stopped that hammer. He's giving me the willy. Well, at that, the rhythm of that tom-tom is very much like the American Indian. For instance, their moon song is sung to the rhythm of tom-tom. Moon of desire. Moon Keep on, Gene. Maybe you can make enough noise to drown out that witch doctor's racket. You're preparing a celebration for us, Cardigan. It's going to be a celebration, all right, only we're going to do the entertaining. If I'm not mistaken, the natives have started the fire dance, which is always followed by a human sacrifice.
la 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 What's on your mind? Dama Malinga. Oh, yeah, I got it all fixed. Dama Malinga. Oh, I get it. You want me to bring the gadget? My gadget is ruined. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. What's he saying? We're to be sacrificed to the fire god. Him, what'd he say? He said that all white men are bad and we have to die to please the fire god. Hey, Frog, try some magic on him. Huh? Try some magic on him. Yeah. Hocus Pocus, Gentleman Rocus, Chili Con Carne, Hot Tamale, Enchilada, Sacramento, California, Michigan. Now look at that. Ain't I done it? Now, well, you sure did. Try your harmonica on. Here, you can show your old man what I done taught you. Come on. God got to stay and teach his children more music. But it looks like you're stuck, Frog. But as long as they think you're a god, you're safe. We'll come back after you as soon as we find the mine. All right, I'm game. 
Make him think that you want Cardigan to stay here with you. Tell him the white guard says he'll stay. Him stay too? Humbo. I suppose this is your idea, Autry. You're a good guesser, Cardigan. You're carrying things a little too far, Gene. Your brother murdered Barclay, and now you're trying to get Cardigan out of the way. Shut up and get into that wagon and be quick about it. I'm going to prove to you that your boyfriend here is not as much on the level as you think he is. Well, I won't do it. If Cardigan stays here, so do I. Listen, Amber. You're going to guide us to the mine in the Valley of Superstition. It's going to be too bad, see? Now, help me hitch up these horses. Yeah, bye. Gave men in the olden days Got their women in a funny way They tied a grapevine round her head And dragged her down the river bed. I found mine in a jungle town The only one I found around Not so good and not so bad Considering she was all they had You know, Gwen, there's a lot of truth in that song, is that? I think you're despicable. That was a drum signal of some kind. The Indians back in Texas used the same method to send their message. You think that message concerns us? I know it. From now on, we're heading right into danger. So I think it's about time that we all had an understanding. Just why did you come to Dunbar, Gwen? I have nothing to explain to you. You'll answer my question or we're turning back. Well, Edward Barclay was my father. I came to South Africa to find out who killed him. Cardigan was a possible suspect in my mind, so I went to work for him. Well, I never really trusted Cardigan, but I had a game to play, and I played it without letting my feelings interfere with my better judgment. I admire your nerve, Gwen. This whole situation's been a game of dog-eat-dog. Dog. Are you sure we're heading in the right direction, Namba? Yeah, Bass. Reach your mind plenty quick. Well, you better be right. Son's sick. I told him you could cure him. Well, what'd you do that for? I know, doctor. I can't cure nobody. You'd better if you want to remain the royal music teacher. How are you doing now? Not so good.
Cardigan, this man's been eating green coconuts. You tell the chief that I'll cure his own son before the next moon. Come here, come here, Chibuyen. Homestas. Nothing doing. He wants him cured right away. He does, huh? Well, um, you inform the chief that his son will be cured within the hour. But none of the natives must approach this hut. This man will go forth in a trance in a few moments. And he goes to find communion with the Great Spirit. No one must follow him. And he'll come back in a few minutes. Cured. Okay. How to climb? I'm a gone fat man. Go on away, Kitty. Shoo! Go on away. Go on away and leave me alone. No! No!
hello, chiefy old pal. I'm so glad to see you. You know, you got too many lions and gorillas in this banana orchard of yours. I'd a whole lot rather be a nursemaid to your kids. Ooh. Hey, here, man. Arrest him. Where's Gene Autry? Huh? Well, I'll tell you anything you want to know if you get me out of this village. Put him on his horse. Boop, 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 boop. I'm ahead. Where's your boss? Big bass, inside. Didn't I see you in Dunbar with Cardigan? Wouldn't be at all surprised. Who's in charge here? I guess I'm the man you're looking for, Autry. May I offer you my hospitality, Miss Barkley? Take the two men out and lock them up now, but I'll decide what to do with them later on. Yeah, boss. Bunga, bunga, well. Sit down, Gwen. I have a lot of things I want to talk over with you. message must have been bad news. I got an idea how we can get out of here. Now that you know how your father died, you ought to know just what to expect from me. You must be very proud of yourself, Cardigan. Your message come, boss. They keep policemen right them up trail to mine. Looks like a showdown, Craig. Load the wagon with dynamite.
behind the fight, we'll try to make the pass and blow it up after us. Come on, get going. Brother here has explained everything to me. All I can do is return and make a report. Thanks, Colonel. Well, yeah, and this Smith hombre, he's the guy that sold me them uncut diamonds. And if he don't confess right now, I'm going to hit him again right on the nose. I'll talk. I did trade those diamonds for a horse. It was Cardigan's orders. Cardigan was back at this whole business here. And it's round the time in Texas, and the bloom is on the sage. How long to be in Texas, back a riding on the range? Just a smell of acorn crying, with sizzling in the pain. Hear the breakfast morn in the early morn, drinking coffee from a cane. Just a riding, rocking, roping, pounding leather all day long. And I reckon I would work for any way To be free again, just to be again When the bloom is on the sand 